Welcome to uh, Lyons Township High School AP Physics. Uh, today I've, we got an example for you involving orbit, uh, orbital mechanics. So we're going to do some a little bit of rocket science today, and uh, specifically we're going to we're going to figure out two things. Uh, for for let's say a spacecraft orbiting a planet, uh, we're going to find the the velocity that that spacecraft has to go in order to achieve a circular orbit around the planet. And, by the way, when you're orbiting, you don't have the rocket engines on or anything. You're just a tin can, you know, coasting through space. Um, and then we're going to also find the time it takes uh, for you to go around that planet. And um, we, we can plug numbers in. I'll have some numbers for you. But I'm more interested in the expressions that we get for the orbital velocity and for the orbital time it takes to go around the planet. So um, imagine here's a planet. And let's say you, this is the North Pole of the Earth, let's say, and let's say you are in a spacecraft and you're orbiting around the equator, okay? Um, now, at this moment, let's say your spacecraft is going that way, your spacecraft wants to go straight. That's Newton's first law. Things want to go straight. If, if there were no forces acting on the spacecraft, then it would go straight. Thankfully, there is a force acting on a spacecraft, and that is the force of gravity. So the force of gravity pulls inward on your spacecraft. Uh, now I'm going to make a note here. Uh, there's often, it's often said that people are weightless in outer space when they're orbiting a planet, and that is uh, completely false. Okay? Your weight is what keeps you in orbit. If you don't have weight, you go flying off in a, in a straight line tangent to the circle. You'll never come back. Okay? Your weight is what keeps you in that circle. You have to have your weight. Matter of fact, uh, if you do a, a ballpark calculation, if you're, let's say, in the International Space Station, which is a, orbits on average about 211 miles above the Earth's surface, your weight up there is about 90% of your weight down here in the surface of the Earth. Okay, So you have almost, a, almost your total weight that's down here up there, and that's what keeps you going in the circle. You are something less, but it's not weightless. You are normal forceless. The same thing would happen is if I lifted up the room that you're sitting in right now in a big crane and then we dropped it. While you were falling, your weight would pull you toward the earth, but you wouldn't be touching the ground anymore. You would feel weightless. You're not weightless though. You are simply normal forceless. Your weight is pulling you toward the ground, uh, but you, the, the ground isn't pushing up on you and that's why you feel weightless. Okay? Now, uh, as far as finding the equation for velocity, well, that's pretty simple. That's pretty much our FBD. There's only one force acting on the ship. So if I do uh, net force in the radial direction equals MA in the radial direction, well, this is simple. This is simple. This is the force of gravity. Now we're going to use we're going to use Newton's law of gravity here because we have large distances involved. So we have big G, mass of the planet, mass of the ship, over R squared. Okay. That equals, now what's doing the accelerating, or what are, what are we studying here? Well, we're studying the ship. So this is mass of the ship, and then A for anything going in a circle is V squared over R. Notice a couple things. The mass of the ship cancels. Doesn't matter if it's a ship, big ship, small ship, International Space Station, tin can, all going to have to go at the same speed to be in orbit, to not fall, okay, into the Earth. Uh, oh, and by the way, I'll make another note. What is orbit? It's a falling, but you're falling around the Earth. You're going fast enough where you, you keep missing the Earth. That's another way to think of orbit. All right, um, now you'll also notice that one R from each denominator and each side cancels, so I'll go ahead and do that. And you pretty much have your equation. If you square root both sides, you get V orbit is square root G mass of the planet, or the mass of whatever you're orbiting, okay? divided by R. Now you got to be careful with R. This is a, a common mistake that people make. The R is the radius of the circle that the ship is making. Okay. Well, how would you figure out the radius of that circle? Well, you'd have to add the radius of the planet plus the height above the planet that you are. Okay. So this is the radius. Let's say you're orbiting Earth, for instance. This would be the radius of the Earth plus the height above the Earth's surface. That would then be the radius of the circle that the ship makes around the planet. Now, uh, just for fun, uh, we'll throw some numbers into here. So, uh, for instance, let's say this is the International Space Station, okay? 
So in that case, the numbers would be the, you need the radius of the Earth, which is approximately 6.38 times 10 to the 6 meters. Uh, let's, the orbital height above the Earth's surface on average is 211 miles. Now, right away, you probably notice an, an issue. You got to have, when you're using this equation, any equation with big G in it, you got to use mass in kilograms and distance in meters. Okay, so if it's got a big G in it and that big G doesn't cancel out, you need kilograms and meters. Okay, so if you, can, if you multiply this, um, there are 1,609 meters approximately in a mile. So if you multiply that by 1,609 and round the number, you get 339,000. 500 meters. Okay, so that's the height in meters above the Earth's surface of the International Space Station. Uh, e to the mass of the Earth. So mass of the Earth is approximately 5.98 times 10 to the 24th kilograms. So that's everything we need. Um, if you add these two together, your R that you're going to plug into the equation ends up being 6.72 times 10 to the 6 meters. Okay, so that's, that's the radius of this purple circle that the ship is making up there. If you plug that in here and you plug the mass of the Earth in here and we know big G, and I'll write that down in case you don't have it, but big G is 6.67 times 10 to the negative 11th. The units are newtons meters squared per kilogram squared. Not that you need that for the ca calculation. But if you plug all that stuff in, you get an orbital velocity of, uh, let's see, what did I get here? I got about 7705 meters per second, which equates to about 17,000 miles per hour. So right now, those astronauts are booking around the Earth at about 17,000 miles per hour, okay? Uh, must be quite a show, okay? Now, uh, the other question we asked was um, how long does it take those astronauts to make one complete circle, one complete orbit, okay? So um, the equation, we're, we're going to use this equation. We're going we're to find period in terms of the stuff that we're given, mass and radius and such. Um, so we know that velocity of anything going in a circle, and we're going to assume a circular orbit here, is 2 pi r over period. And velocity is this. So if I put that in there, square root of g mass of the planet over r equals 2 pi r over t. And I want to solve for t, okay? So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to square everything, get rid of my square root. So we got g mass of the planet over r equals 4 pi squared r squared over t squared. Now, I'm making a quick note here. Uh, common algebraic mistake. People will say, ah, oh, okay, so one of the R's. Can't do that. If this R squared were over there, or this R were over here, well, now you could do it. But they're on opposite sides of the equation. You actually have to cross multiply here. Now I'm going to do that in the next board, okay? So we're going to cross multiply, okay? So you end up with G, mass of the planet, T squared, equals 4 pi r cubed. Notice it's an r cubed, okay? It's not r, it's r cubed. And if you get t squared by itself or in the square root, you get the following. You get 4 pi r cubed over g mass of the planet. Now, a, a quick reminder, what's r again? r is always the radius of the circle that the object is making. Or another way to put that, it's the distance from the center of the planet to the center of the ship, okay? That's the, that's the R you plug in there, which in our case was this number, okay? We got that by adding the radius of the planet plus the height above the planet that we're sitting. Um, notice the mass you plug in here is the mass of whatever you're orbiting. So for us, it would be the Earth, okay? That would be the mass of the planet. Um, I'll save you the calculation. You might want to check this, make sure you can do it in your calculator, okay? But if you plug all the numbers in, you get about um, 5481. Now, what units would that be? Okay, well, it's a metric system. It's kilograms, meters, and seconds. So it takes the astronauts that many seconds to get around the Earth. If you divide that by 60, you get about 91.3 minutes, okay? So it's just over an hour and a half. 
Uh, so, by the way, they kind of see sunrise and sunset every hour and a half, okay, as they orbit the Earth. Um, now, I'll make a quick note. If you take this equation and you do a little other algebra on it, you get the following. You get t squared over r cubed equals 4 pi. Oh, that's a pi squared. Oh, that's a pi squared. Oh, make sure you catch that. Sorry about that. That's a pi squared. That's a pi squared. Double check that. All right, 4 pi squared, okay, um, over g mass of the planet. You might notice you get t squared over r cubed, okay? That looks like another equation that you might know. t squared over a cubed is a constant. That's Kepler's third law, okay? So Kepler got this well before Newton got this. We call this Newton synthesis. Newton synthesized Kepler's third law. Kepler got this primarily from guessing and checking with the five visible planets that he could see. Newton derived this via physics and got the same result. But not only that, whereas Kepler did not know what this C meant, Newton now knows what that constant means. Okay? Uh, so for instance, if you're looking at uh, the International Space Station going around the Earth, this would be the mass of the Earth. On the flip side of that, what if you're looking at planets going around the sun? What mass does that represent? Well, it represents the mass of the sun, then. That's what the planets are orbiting. So this is a one way to calculate the mass of our sun without have me directly measuring it. So um, again, please make sure you fix that error with that pi squared. Um, I, hope, I hope that was helpful, and um, thank you very much.